This home at 3085 Pacific is the very start of the Third Bay Area style. Joseph Eshrick is going from the uh, horizontal emphasis at the front, right here, through vertical emphasis at the garden gate, to pronounced vertical emphasis at the courtyard. He's taking the wood sticks, just like Stick Style did, and planting them on the outside of the building to express the framing within. Here on the inside of the home, that verticality is also expressed in the proportion of the doors and the paneling, as well as in the vertical expression and interest of the spaces themselves. What's interesting is right across the street, three years later, at 3074 Pacific, Eshrick is much more assured of his new vocabulary, and he's comfortable speaking his own language now. You can see how everything accentuates the vertical. Here at Raycliffe Terrace, a year prior to that, he has done away with the overhangs and projections. Now there are square punched windows and a marked verticality in pretty much everything. Here at 3700 Washington, this massive home is one of the first explorations in a completely assured style that Eshrick pretty much made up himself. The vertical boards are seen here on the fireplace and sheathing the main volume itself. The pronounced verticality and slenderness of the concrete columns are very simply detailed where they meet the beams. Here the corner window, a holdover from the second barrier style is shown. Here you can get a sense of the simple detailing that Eshrick used throughout his homes and throughout his entire career. Uh, as we look up at the ceiling, the same vertical boards work all the way through. Here is Eshrick working on a, a 1900 shingle style home and he's favored shingles as Eshrick would through his entire career. But you can see the main difference in the window styles and proportions. Here is third barrier style at its worst. This is what could happen unfortunately with this style. Uh, another nice home up on Pacific. There are a few great blocks that are definitely worth the walk. Uh, encompasses all the different Bay Area styles. But here are the, uh, up on Clarendon, a very sad example about what can happen with neglect. This was a remarkable home by Anchin and Allen in 1955. You can see that block up on the third floor that has been completely enclosed there at the side shot that formerly was a uh, trellised upper roof deck, but now that's all gone. Here, uh, George Rockrise, a local architect, uh, did some very good work here on the Filbert Street Steps, also as another Rockrise. Uh, up here on uh, Palo Alto, uh, there's two great homes. Uh, this Charles Warren Callister home actually took me by surprise. I worked in offices when I was a very young architect with the Third Barrier style architects. And I had no idea this home was built in 59. When you were there, um, it definitely casts a spell on you. Uh, Callister was great at combining Japanese and Frank Lloyd Wright influences, and you'll see that here in the interior shot where everything comes together, the oriental as well as the craftsman style. This house here on Digby is not all that remarkable other than simply being a proponent of third barrier style. This unfortunate home, uh, the homage to Frank Lloyd Wright, was done without really understanding what Wright was about. This is a real crime. This beautiful home at 895 El Camino del Mar commands a wonderful view, and it's currently under renovation to what I call neo-deco Asian shiny. Horrible, just truly horrible. These are, this is Eshrick's own home here on Calubra Terrace, and you can see his love of shingles coming out. Uh, this is another uh, Telegraph Hill Steps building with the marked verticality here on Green Street, also the marked verticality of the buildings. The colliding shed forms were a big part of third barrier style and architecture in particular at this point in time when architects began to flirt with postmodern sensibilities. 